So welcome everyone to the April AfriMap R community meetup. We're privileged to have Anne Treasure here today. She works with me at Telarify and she's also part of the AfriMap R project team. Anne's going to tell us a little bit about a project that we run in South Africa for the digital humanities and computational social sciences uh, community. And for this project, she developed an R workflow that is automated and reads data from Google Forms, uh, Google Spreadsheets that is created by Google Forms. And we do some visualizations to help our community uh, learn more about what's happening, uh, who the actors are in the, the digital humanities, computational social sciences community in South Africa, what resources are available and more. So without further ado, Anne, you're on. Hi, I'm going to talk to you today about an automated data pipeline um, using R and GitHub Actions. So a quick overview of what I'm going to be talking about today, just a quick look at the requirement of what this job was all about. Um, an overview of the data pipeline that I used to do this, so the inputs and the processing and the output steps, um, but then mostly focusing on the data processing. So this is the, the data import and the authorizations that were needed to, to set up um, a bit on the data manipulation and then how I automated all of this using GitHub Actions. Um, so first of all, the requirement. Um, this is a project for SADILAR, which is the South African Centre for Digital Language Resources. Um, and this is a national centre in South Africa supported by our Department of Science and Innovation. Um, our SADILAR has an enabling function focusing on all of the official languages of South Africa, supporting research and development in the domains of language technologies and language related studies in the humanities and social sciences. Um, SADILAR also has a mandate to develop digital humanities capacity in South Africa, um, and in order to bring about large scale adoption of digital research methodologies and practices to the social sciences and humanities, SADILAR established what is known as the Escalator Project, um, and this consists of a national digital champions program, which is a mentorship program um, with capacity development and awareness raising initiatives. And as part of this, under Escalator, we run what is called the Stakeholder Map Project. And this aims to collect and share data on digital humanities and computational social sciences activities in South Africa. So this is data on projects, people, publications, data sets, training, training courses, that sort of thing. Um, and the aim is to provide a deeper insight into these activities in South Africa um, in order to facilitate networking and collaboration and to support the optimal use of resources. So for example, researchers who are looking for collaborators, um, students who are looking for training programs or learning materials. Um, it can also help to highlight gaps and opportunities to funders and institutions, for example. So the spec that I was given was um, we want to collect data using Google Forms because this is a really useful tool to be able to just send out to people that they can fill out um, and send the, you know, the data gets sent back to us. Um, and then for the visual, visualizations of this data to be done in Shiny and Kumu. So for those of you who are familiar with R, you are possibly familiar with Shiny, which is an R package that makes it easy to build interactive web apps straight from R. And Kumu is a really useful tool as well. Um, it makes it easy to organize complex data into relationship maps. So particularly useful for this project, wanting to see the kind of the connections between the various stakeholders and the record types. So how did I go about doing this? Um, I'm quite a visual person, so I need to, to, to see what, I, what my plan is um, from start to finish. So I put this pipeline diagram together. It's not a very professional diagram, but it was more for me to see what, where the start was, where the finish was, <clears throat> and how I was going to get there, how, what, what steps I was going to do in between. Um, so the input and the source here is um, the Google form, which I've already mentioned, linked to a Google spreadsheet. Um, and then the output is the Kumu visualization and the desk, or the, uh, sorry, the Kumu visualization and the Shiny app. And the data processing steps, kind of the engine of all of this is what happens in the middle. Um, now this is very, this diagram is very flexible. Um, I've adapted it as I've gone along. If something hasn't worked, then I've changed it and I've come back to the drawing board and kind of moved things around. But the way it sits now, this, this is kind of the workflow that is, that is working. Um, so if we first look just briefly at the input and output, which is the bit at the top there and the bit at the bottom. So we start off with 
collecting data with the Google form. And on a Google form, if you click on responses, and then this little icon here for a spreadsheet, Google will create a spreadsheet and link it to the spreadsheet. And that it's from that spreadsheet that we then import the data um, and do what we need to do with the data. So it's to go from that to these visualizations in Shiny and in Kumu. Um, and yeah, we have a, being an AFRI map bar, presentation, we do have a map to show you. Um, and the Kuma visualization, there's not a lot of data in here at the moment. It's kind of just a little bit of dummy data at the moment. Um, so this is quite a simple Kumu diagram at the moment. Um, but eventually we will have a lot of kind of clusters of organizations and a lot more data to show. Um, so this big step in the middle, the data processing is where I'm going to focus on for the rest of the presentation. So how did I get from from the input there to the output. Um, and I kind of again visualized this to try and explain it in three different steps. Um, first of all, the, the import of the data and authorizations that need to be set up to be able to read and write to a Google spreadsheet. Um, and then manipulating the data with R scripts to then write to a separate spreadsheet for Kumu um, and an R data file for Shiny. Um, so steps one and two kind of overlap each other quite a lot. Um, and this is then all automated and all run using GitHub Actions. So I'll kind of go through these sort of bit by bit. So first of all, for the data import and authorizations, um, the R package that I use to read data from the Google Sheets and to write to the Google Sheets is called Google Sheets 4. Um, and kind of the first step that you need to be aware of that you need to do is to set up the authorizations to be able to import the data from a Google spreadsheet. Um, you need to be able to tell Google that yes, I'm a, I can you know, access that spreadsheet, I'm authorized to be able to, to read that data in. Um, and there's, there's various ways of doing this. Um, you can kind of in, in sort of levels of complexity that I, I sort of figured out and I'm gonna to explain to you with each step, I realized, okay, that's not good enough. I need something else and need something else, something else. Um, so you, first of all, you can run the script locally, but you need interaction. I'll show that to you in a second. Um, then you can run the script locally without interaction, so a non-interactive script. Um, but for our purposes, this was still not good enough. I needed non-interactive, um, a, a non-interactive process, but I needed the whole thing to be automated as well. And that's when GitHub Actions come in. Um, and then the scripts manipulate the data using R, and then I write to a separate spreadsheet, which is linked to Kumu. And I've got an R data file that then um, runs the Shiny app. So if we, first of all, if we look at the first one, the script that runs locally, but it needs interaction, then I'm gonna just take the screen up there. So this is a kind of a, um, just a, um, a temporary R project that I have for the purposes of this introduction, uh, for this presentation. Um, so if I load my Google Sheets 4 package, um, and if this is the Google spreadsheet where all my data is sitting, this is the one that I want to read data in from. So I send that one in and then I use the read sheet function from Google Sheets 4 to read the data from that spreadsheet. Um, but this is now what I mean by interaction that is needed. So it needs me to now do something to tell it to go forward. So it knows who I am because I've done this before. So it's saying, you know, is this the email to use to authorize to access those accounts or do you press zero and you obtain a new token, which then brings up sort of different screens to you know, to allow the authorization to happen from Google. Um, so that's what I mean by it needs interaction from you to be able to continue. Um, the next step is then you have a script that runs locally, but in a non-interactive way. So you don't actually want to have to interact with it and tell it what to do. Um, and this took me quite a long time to try and figure out a lot of tearing out of hair and bashing my head against the wall. I just tried to figure out how to do this. And I saw sort of bits and pieces here and there of how to do it, um, but no, nothing it was really working. And then I came across this issue on the Google Drive GitHub page where Jenny Bryan gives some really good advice of how to do this. I'm not gonna go into any detail exactly of how to do this. Um, there's just no time in this presentation for that. But these are kind of the basic steps that you need to follow. Um, and it involves creating a Google Cloud Platform account. And then in there, you create a service account. Um, in that service account, you need to create a key, which you download as a JSON file. Um, and then you need to share that service account with your Google spreadsheet. So you need, you, you're letting Google know that it's okay 
to read that data, to, to set those authorizations to get that data. So you, you get the service account email address associated with that service account that you've just set up and you share that, you copy it into the sharing settings of your Google spreadsheet, you make it an editor. Um, and then you point this authorization function from Google Sheets 4 to this JSON file um, to allow the authorizations to happen. I know this probably doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but it's, it's just if you, if you need to do non-interactive authorizations, then you can come back to this and, and follow this recipe of how to do it. Um, and unless, until you actually do it, it probably won't really be that clear. Um, so I have put in the appendices, I've put um, slides with screenshots of sort of how to do this for a bit more information that you could look at afterwards, um, if you like. Um, I can show you a little bit on here of what I mean. So we'll load our Google Sheets 4 package. Okay. Um, now let's assume that we've done all of these steps. So we've created the cloud platform account. We've got a service account. Uh, we've created the key and downloaded the JSON file. This, J this JSON file, as I said, is it, it is the key. It, it's what it's the file that the script is going to access to then allow those authorizations to happen, to sort of allow that service account to access that Google spreadsheet. Um, and here I've just put it in my R project directory. So it's sitting over there. That's the JSON file. And now I need to point my authorization function to that JSON file. So there's my function. I put my email address in and the path to where that JSON file is. So that's telling it to, to go to the file, which is there. So I pass that in, tell it that's my spreadsheet, and now my read sheet function. And you can see here it's refreshing a token and it's reading in the data. So it's allowed me to read that data in without any interaction, um, which is kind of the step that we've wanted. Um, and then I have scripts that I'm not, again, I'm not going to go into these manipulation, data manipulation scripts. There's not really time for that. Um, but they've got a whole lot of scripts that then manipulate the data and get it ready for Kumu and okay, it's taking a while, but there it is. This is now, I'm just showing you what the spreadsheet looks like, which I then write to a separate spreadsheet, um, which is linked to Kumu and then the visualization for Kumu gets updated and when, it, when you refresh it, it'll update. Um, this is the spreadsheet that I actually write the data to. You need to also share your service account email address that you that you just created with this spreadsheet, because um, that then tells you it sets up the authorizations. It tells Google that you can now write to that spreadsheet as well. Um, similarly for Shiny, I'm not again. I'm not going to go into sort of all of the scripts or my manipulation scripts of how I do it. Um, but this is just pulling in all of the data from that. Google spreadsheet that's linked to the Google form, um, formatting in different ways, and then just sort of eliminating data that I don't think I should show sort of on a public data visualization. Um, another thing you need to be aware of with Google forms, if you're going to collect data that way, is punctuation. Um, yeah, sometimes, for example, for a checklist, if, if people can select more than one option, it'll put commas between them um, when it brings it into the spreadsheet and you just need to figure out ways to deal with that, how you're going to split those up um, if you need to. Um, and then I write this to an R data file, which then appears in my shiny um, directory. Okay. Um, then when I come to wanting to actually run my shiny app, this is the R data file that gets loaded in, loaded in, you'll see all of the data appear in the environment. Okay, there it is. And then again, I'm not gonna go through the actual script for the Shiny app. But there now is the Shiny app. So the Shiny app consists of, um, I've got a tab with a map that shows the various data points. Again, this is dummy data. There's not a lot of data in it. It's just for testing purposes. So I can select person, project, or training course. If there's more than one 
um, point in a location. It's got a circle that you can click on that it zooms in, and then you can sort of click on points for more information. You reset the map. Um, and each data type then has a separate table with kind of the full data set for that in it. Um, so that's the scripts for manipulation and then running the Shiny app. The, the problem now though, is so this was all very well and fine for running something locally, um, but this needed to go onto GitHub for all of the amazing reasons that we put things on GitHub. Um, and also I needed to automate the whole process and for that, but the fact that I was going to put this on GitHub, I also wanted to, to use a GitHub action, which I heard about um, as a way to automate a process like this. Um, but the problem now is that sitting in the folder, you've now got this, you need the JSON file to be able to set up the authorizations to read from Google Sheets. But the problem is leaving this JSON file sitting there in your R project folder, you should not make your JSON file public. It's got sort of, secure and private information in there that someone with malicious intent could get in there and access your accounts and that sort of thing. So, so you can't put this up on GitHub. Well, you shouldn't put this up on GitHub with the JSON file kind of in its raw form like that. Um, so this posed a few problems. Um, so this is my next step is needing a non-interactive process that I wanted to automate, but with this JSON file being a bit of a problem as well. So this led me to GitHub Actions. Um, and this is an amazing tool. I can highly recommend you use it if you need to automate something. Um, this is from the GitHub website. It's a continuous integration and continuous delivery platform that allows you to automate your build, test, and deployment pipeline. Um, at the end of this presentation, I've got a section on um, with references and, and sort of further resources that you can look at and to read up on all of this. Um, so my questions now I was facing and wanting to use a GitHub action, my questions were where to put this JSON file and how to keep it a secret um, and how to set up the non-interactive authorizations to be able to read and write to Google Sheets using the Google Sheets 4 package, but within the GitHub action. Um, and this seemed like a really daunting task. I, I, again, a lot of head bashing and tearing out of hair. And I just couldn't find ways to do this. A lot of the stuff I was finding was referring to package environments for R if you were putting together a package. And this is a non-package environment. I just, yeah, trying to figure out how to do this. Um, so I reached out to the R for Data Science Slack channel, um, to the R for Data Science online learning community. And I can highly recommend you join this community. Um, it's, it's, this is a little plug for R for Data Science. It's a very, very friendly community of just really lovely people who are willing to help. Um, and a lot of these online platforms can be quite scary to post to. People can be quite mean um, and they can be a bit scary, but the R for Data Science online learning community are really friendly. Um, it is just a very welcoming place I have experienced to chat to people and to get help. Um, so I can highly recommend you go to their website and you join their Slack channel. Um, so I posted on R for Data Science um, on their Slack channel. I just told, you know, I posted what I had done, what I was wanting to do, problems I was facing and, and had anyone done anything like this before. And within a day or two, a very nice man called Jonathan Trattner responded and said, oh yes, I've written a package for that called Token Code R. Um, and that just solved all of my problems. So let me just quickly show you token code R. Um, so this is the package there, token code R. We'll just load it up, load up Google Sheets 4, which I'll need in a second. So what token code R basically does is it takes the JSON file and it encrypts it and puts it into a secret folder, okay? Um, and once you've encrypted the JSON file and, and then you, you create a password to be able to access that file as well. And then you can actually delete this raw form of the JSON file out of your R project, and then it's okay to put up on GitHub, okay? Um, so this is how you use the, this function, create in PW to create the password, and you, you just give it a name. So for example, here, G sheet access after my bar is the name I'm gonna to give to, to the encrypted file and to the password. Um, and here it generates, this is the bit that you need, um, so here's the name you've given it, G-Sheet Access Epic Map R, and then it adds the word password because this is then the password that it's going to use to access your encrypted JSON file, okay? Um, for local use, you then 
copy this into your R environment file. I'm not going to open this now because I have another password in there. I don't want to be made public. Um, but you would use use this um, edit R environment. You would open you um, uh, type that in to open the file. Then you copy this in the whole name and the file name um, with the password. You press enter to give it a new line, you save and close, and then you restart R, um, and then that'll remain in your R environment file. Um, then encrypt token is the function that you use to encrypt the JSON file. Okay, so you use that function. The service is the name that you've now used above when you created the password. Um, the input, that is the actual JSON file that I have sitting down here with its, the JSON file, file name. And the destination, that's where you want your secret folder to go with the JSON file. Okay, so you send um, that off. You won't see the secret folder listed here. You can check that it's there. Um, it'll be in your sort of Git screen over here. You can see it's there. Um, it'll also appear in your terminal. This is the um, directory for, for this project. Um, there, sorry, let me screen down a bit. There, you can see that the secret folder is there. Um, you can go into it and you can see this is your encrypted JSON file. Okay, we can even open it and you can see it's just gobbledygook basically, it's, it's encrypted. Okay. Um, then what you do is you, you use the same from Google Sheets for this authorization function. So again, you're giving it your email and you're giving it the path now to the encrypted JSON file in the secret folder. And it knows now to look in the R environment for the password that it needs to access that, okay? Um, we give it the spreadsheet, we use our read sheet function and it's bringing the data in without you having had to interact. Okay, but this is now, this is now for local use. But we want this to go to GitHub Actions. Um, and there's a few more steps that you need to be aware of for GitHub Actions. So I'm now gonna show you my GitHub repository page. This is now kind of the repository page for the Sadila stakeholder map project with kind of the pipeline that is now working. Um, so the first thing to be aware of is in your GitHub repo, um, of course, have a README file that is just good practice as well. Um, you need to have directories for functions and for scripts. You're going to bring a function in there that's going to, it's kind of a, a wrapper for authorizing, for setting the Google credentials for, for to authenticate, authenticate the Google credentials. Um, and it just makes it easier to use token code R. Okay, and you've got a scripts folder that, that's containing all of your scripts that you need to use. Um, you've already encoded the JSON file. So here it is sitting in the secret folder. Okay, um, that's what's in there. But now instead of having your password in the R environment like you would have if you were using this locally, you now you need to put it into a GitHub um, repository secret. Okay. Um, and you do that by going up here to settings, secrets, actions, because this is a, a secret that the GitHub action is going to access to be able to, to open that file. Okay, and these are all, this is a list of all of the secrets that I've got. So you create a new repository secret, and then you put the name in there that you, when you created your password, like G Sheet, Access, AfriMapR, or whatever you used, you put the name of it in there and the value is just that sequence of letters and numbers and that's the password that actually goes in there, okay. Um, then you also need to edit your R scripts to be able to use the function and to set up those authorizations. So here I'm bringing in the function. So these are the authorization scripts we used before um, when we were pointing it um, to the JSON file before we made the JSON a secret. This is when we made the JSON file a secret on our computer. But now for the GitHub action, these are the steps that we're going to use. So we're sourcing the function, and then these are the arguments we send into the function. So we're telling it, um, this is my encrypted JSON file. This is where it is in the dot secret folder. And then in the actual GitHub action, we're going to tell it to look for the password in a, um, the action secret to be able to access that file. Okay. Um, the next step for now setting up the GitHub action is 
you need to have this .github slash workflows directory. Um, you do that by just sort of in your main repo here, you would add file, create new file, and you just type in .github slash workflow, and then the file name that you want for your YML file, and then .yml. Your YML is essentially the, the engine of the GitHub action. That is what makes the GitHub action work. This is this actual dot. YML file. Okay, so and there's various things that you need to to set up in this file, um, kind of various pieces, parts to it. Um, you need to give it a trigger to make it run. So you, you need to give it can either be um, like action in your repository, a push or a pull, or something like that. I've used a scheduler one, which runs. I've got it to set once, uh, to run once per day. I can make it run more than that if I want, but at the moment I'm just yeah, you know, once per day is fine. Um, and it uses a cron scheduler. So uh, this is minutes past the hour. That's the hour. Um, and that's days, weeks, and months of the year. And this is in UTC time. So this is me telling it run at 4 a.m. UTC every day of the year, basically. Um, this little bit here allows me to run my YML file manually. So I can go into my sort of actions workflow. I'll show that to you in a second, and I can make it run manually, which is very useful for when I'm actually developing this and, and testing that you can make it sort of run anytime you want. Um, you need to give it a runner, which is essentially the, um, the GitHub server that it's going to run on. And there's a there's Mac, there's Ubuntu, there's Windows, you just pick the one you want. Um, so this is now the part I wanted to get to. This is, uh, so you've encrypted your JSON file, it's in your secret folder, and now you've created that repository secret and in that repository secret is the password for it to be able to access that encrypted JSON file, which then authorizes the reading from the Google spreadsheet. So there's quite a few steps that this is, this is allowing it to do. And this is where you set it. You're setting your environmental variables here. Um, and this is where you're telling it, go and find that password, G sheet access password. That's what you're gonna to need to open um, the files and to access the files that we need you to access. Um, there's a checkout step. There's uh, you set up your R, you install packages, and then you run your R scripts that are in your scripts folder. So I have two of them. I've got the one that um, manipulates my data and then gets it ready for um, a Kumu ready spreadsheet. Um, and then I've got this one, the data for Shiny, and that's the one that then uh, saves the R data file that, that is then picked up by the Shiny app um, when the Shiny app gets deployed. Um, this little bit here, because the last step of my shiny script is to save an R data file and GitHub being GitHub, you know, changes to the repo involve committing files and pushing and pulling and that sort of thing. But I don't want to have anything to do with this. I don't want to have to interact with this in any way. It has to be automated from start to finish. So I need this file that comes from here to be committed to GitHub straight away. Um, this is my first GitHub action that then sort of sets all of this up. And then I have the second GitHub action to run after this one so that it can pick up and, and load the latest R data file, which is now automatically committed to GitHub using this piece of script here. Um, so this is now the YML file to actually run the GitHub action. And now you can, you can look at your GitHub actions by going to the actions tab. And in here, you'll see your work, the workflows you have set up. So I've got two workflows. I've got one for Kumu and I've got one for Shiny. Um, this little bit here, when I was telling you that I could run it manually, because I have this little piece of code in my YML file, if I wanted to run it manually, I can just tell it to run so I can test it. So that's quite useful. Um, and this is a list of all of the runs. Um, the green circles are what you want. The red circles are what you don't want. That means it's broken. Um, but the useful thing is if you click on that, it'll tell you what the error is. And if you click on the build, you can go in there and you can, so each step, it'll tell you what it's done. So if there's a green circle and everything's worked, there'll be no red here, everything's worked. But now you can go in and you can see, okay, what is the error? What's happened? Um, how can I fix this? That's actually very useful. Um, I also wanted to show you the last thing quickly, um, the Shiny app. So I have my two YML files, one for Kumu and one for Shiny. Um, so the difference here, so similarly, like you needed to um, authorize to read 
from a Google spreadsheet and to write to a Google spreadsheet, you needed to sort of set that authorization up. You need to do the same thing for Shiny to be able to access a Shiny account and to deploy an app to that Shiny account. Um, so here, just quickly show you, you set up a token and a secret on your repository for Shiny. And you get that by going to your account on shinyapps.io, if that's where you put in your app. Um, and under tokens, if you press tokens and show, um, you then copy, I've obviously blocked it out here, um, but you copy the token and you copy the secret, and then you add that in to your repository secrets like we did before, settings, actions, new repository secret, and then you put your shiny secret and your shiny token in there, okay? Um, and then in your .yml script, similarly to when we set the environmental variables for um, reading that encrypted JSON file with the, the password that we had in the GitHub action secret, we now set the environment to tell it to go to Shiny and there's the token and there's the secret. Um, uh, we've got steps for the checkout and setting up R again. Um, and now we connect to Shiny and this is the same function we would use if you were deploying from your console. On your computer, you set the account info with your name. And so this is a way of, because we've already, we've put the repository secret with the Shiny and token. So GitHub knows to go and look there and find it. So you don't actually have to, because you don't want to make that secret and that token public. So you don't want to actually type that in here. So it's, you just say Shiny token, Shiny secret, and then it knows to go and find it to then access that account. So you've connected to the Shiny account. Now you want to upload your Shiny app. So you use your deploy app function, again, which is what you would use if you were coding this from your console. And now you tell it everything that it needs. So this is the directory it needs to go to, and these are all of the files it needs. So in my GitHub repo, I have a, a directory, shiny stakeholder map. This is everything it needs, the app.r file that runs the shiny app, my function to draw the map, and that this is the R data file that gets written to this folder, every to this directory every day. Um, from the previous GitHub action. Um, and that's the account and the server where it is. And this final argument here, I think it defaults to false. So you need to say true. You're basically just telling it, go to that account, to that Shiny app and force the update. So update the app according to sort of this latest data. And after that, um, I now have with my cron scheduler, I have my, uh, the Shiny app that updates daily. I can set it to update more than that if I wanted to with the cron scheduler, but at the moment it's just upsta updates every day. Um, and then the Kumu that updates, um, the data of this updates once a day as well. Um, so at the moment there's not a lot of test data in there. Um, this is kind of another version of it that shows a little bit more data that's kind of sort of more where we're heading with it. Um, yeah. So my visualization is updated daily. Um, that's all I wanted to actually share with you today. I know it's a lot of information. Um, it's quite a sort of complicated pipeline. So I've just kind of glossed over everything. Um, so I've put a, a lot of slides here with resources for you to look at um, if you're interested in getting more information on any of these things. Um, here's all of our contact information. And I've also, there's a lot of extra slides I originally had in this presentation, but I think it was long enough as it was. So I've put these all into an appendices. So it just shows you a bit more information about how you create that service account, um, how you create that key and download the JSON file, sharing the service account email address with your Google Sheet, um, and then pointing the authorization function to that JSON file. And then just a little bit more about GitHub Action and Token Code R, how to set things up in your R project. Um, sort of how to encrypt the JSON file, creating the password, that type of thing, and then creating the repository secret on GitHub, um, adding the function and editing your R scripts, and yeah, information on the YML file, bits to add in for Shiny. So there's just a bit more information for you there to have a look at. Um, yeah, so I hope that you have enjoyed the presentation, um, and feel free to, yeah, to access the presentation for more information. If, if you'd like. Okay, thank you.